We're recording. You're good to go, Father. Thank you, Rachel. Good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday. Today, we also celebrate the great feast of the Epiphany in America and actually in most places in the world. But as we know, it's actually January 6th. And it's useful because today is only merely the 10th day of Christmas. We still have an 11th day and a 12th day and a 12th night to get to before Epiphany. That's how that works, by the way. 12th night, aside from a Shakespearean play, is also a time of some kind of you know raucous celebration. And <clears throat> I know that we've talked a lot about Christmas decorations. That's one of those times when, hey, if you can, you can also make a bonfire of that. But that's not necessarily something I want to encourage, especially for insurance reasons, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But still, the time for celebration is ongoing. Let's continue with our usual morning prayer. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy will. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts that we to whom the incarnation of Christ thy son was made known by the message of an angel may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection to the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, we're having a, a lovely kind of epiphany day snowfall today. Just a little, cute little snow out there. Hope that where you are, it's also very pleasant. It's very comfy here to use the word Anita mentioned a little before. So let's dive in. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. May the splendor of your majesty, O Lord, we pray, shed its light upon our hearts, that we may pass through the shadows of this world and reach the brightness of our eternal home. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Rise up in splendor, Jerusalem. Your light has come. The glory of the Lord shines upon you. See, darkness covers the earth and thick clouds cover the peoples. But upon you, the Lord shines and over you appears his glory. Nations shall walk by your light and kings by your shining radiance. Raise your eyes and look about. They all gather and come to you. Your sons come from afar and your daughters in the arms of their nurses. Then you shall be radiant at what you see. Your heart shall throb and overflow for the riches of the sea shall be emptied out before you. The wealth of nations shall be brought to you. Caravans of camels shall fill you. Dromedaries from Midian and Ephaf, all from Sheba shall come bearing gold and frankincense and proclaiming the praises of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. O oh God, with your judgment endow the king, and with your justice the king's son. He shall govern your people with justice, and your afflicted ones with judgment. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. Justice shall flower in his days, and profound peace till the moon be no more. May he rule from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. The kings of Tarshish and the isles shall offer gifts. The kings of Arabia and Seba shall bring tribute. All kings shall pay him homage. All nations shall serve him. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. 
for he shall rescue the poor when he cries out, and the afflicted when he has no one to help him. He shall have pity for the lowly and the poor. The lives of the poor he shall save. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for your benefit, namely, that the mystery was made known to me by revelation. It was not made known to people in other generations as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles are co-heirs, members of the same body, and co-partners in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Alleluia, alleluia. We saw his star at its rising and have come to do him homage. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of King Herod, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem saying, where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled and all Jerusalem with him. Assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They said to him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it has been written through the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word that I too may go and do him homage. After their audience with the king, they set out. And behold, the star that they had seen at its rising preceded them until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star. And on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. Then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Happy Epiphany, everyone. We still have a couple days until actual Epiphany, but we're celebrating it today. So let's go through this a little bit. The typical thing about epiphany is that, frankly, we have to talk about what epiphany means. So it's a Greek word that means a revelation, essentially. Epi, above, phanein, to show. It's also very similar to another word, which is theophany. So why not call it the theophany? Well, because of this above thing that's going on. In the story that we heard today in the gospel, the above thing that's going on is the star. It's the light from heaven, you know, it's a heavenly light, it's a star that is moving around. And <clears throat> it's showing this is the place where Christ is. It's not just a, it's not just a theophany, that is say theophany, God showing, but something else. So there's an intersection here between a couple ideas. One of the ways in which we talk about the epiphany, and if you happen to be in church today or last night, this is what I'm talking about. This is that time when people see something about Christ, specifically the Magi story, like we just heard, also the baptism of the Lord, also the wedding at Cana. All three mysteries are, are typically included in this mystery. They're ways in which people, just generally people, have seen the Lord. But in a special way, we really have the 
a story of the Magi to guide us. In the other ones, the people who are seeing are mostly generally Jews. So in the baptism of the Lord, it's the people who are there at the Jordan with John, baptizing them, those things. People who are already kind of with it, with the baptism of John and those kinds of things. Wedding Feast of Cana, we suppose it is also this moment, but it happens at Cana, which is a little bit different than like, for example, if it were in Jerusalem or Bethlehem even, it's at Cana, not even Nazareth. Cana. So it has this sensibility about being a bit more beyond. Still, this isn't like the big moment, but the Magi, though, are these characters who come from anywhere but. And this is something that's very interesting and useful because it reminds us about what is really going on. It's about the revelation to the Gentiles, which, if you're remembering in the prophecy of Simeon, is very much important part of what he said. Remember when he said, now let you let your servant go in peace, your word has been fulfilled, my eyes have seen the salvation of Israel and a light to the revelation of the Gentiles, a light to the revelation of the Gentiles, to the peoples, to the everyone. That's the idea going on with Epiphany. <clears throat> We've encountered a couple of theophanies though, along the way. And here on Coffee, we've been talking about it a lot, especially in November, in the first part of Advent and December, and frankly, also with Christmas. The theophany of the Lord is something which is also yet to come, like the second coming, as it were. This thing of the Lord being present to us in a really real, tangible, majestic, really full way is something which we are always waiting for. It is something that we look forward to with expectation as we've been talking about in those times. No need to revisit also why it's a kind of a scary thing too. But the Lord coming to us, especially in this theophanic way, this way of his real ultimate revelation is something that as Christians, we keep in mind and in our hearts because not just because it's like, you know, a story that we say or a shared memory that we have, but because we are always waiting for the Lord. Our whole life is an advent. It's a really long advent. It's a time when we are waiting for the coming of the Lord. And in that advent, most of that action of advent is something that we take on, that we are ourselves coming closer to God. There's an interplay there too. And <clears throat> this action of preparation isn't one necessarily that we're trying to check off a lot of check boxes to make sure everything is just right on our own little like dance card of faith or something, but to make sure that instead we are paying attention. And it's something which you know, in a really strong way on Epiphany Day is totally about pay attention. So the Magi who come to Christ are very attentive. If you, you can say nothing about them, you can definitely say this, they're paying attention. They're watching the sky and find a star, right? That's, the, that's like the big part of their story. And we also have been paying attention. We wait with the Lord, even as we celebrate these mysteries of his incarnation and now his epiphany, we do so kind of with a forward idea, an expectation of things to come, not merely memory in the story, but also a reality that is even now manifesting itself. Isn't that cool? I think it's fun. So when we approach the epiphany as a mystery, we do so recognizing that we are coming to him, the Lord, the infant Jesus, in all sincerity, in all humility, in frankly, all cuteness too, as, as a baby, but also in all of its kind of terrible qualities. The, the star comes to Bethlehem, to the place where they were. You know, usually we think of like the place where they were is, is the stable. You know, it's not exactly a, a great place. The place where they were with the manger, not awesome. And this is where the star goes. There's an aspect of this which is also very rough. 
But the other part is we are our whole lives long waiting for the Lord and preparing for him. We go to him, but this is the big part. He comes to us in so many ways, in the law, in the prophets, from the very beginning of the Old Testament, throughout the story, the Lord is coming to us with great intensity, with great speed. This, if anything, is our epiphany message for this year, that our Lord is always coming to us, even as we are trying to come closer to him. And as he comes close to us, he does so rather well. In fact, one of the huge parts of our lives as Catholics is our sacramental life, in which the grace of God is being made present again with us, especially in the Eucharist. And this is something that, of course, is really important to us, God coming to us, even as we go to God. There's this old-fashioned idea that, uh, like in the medieval theology world, really tries to explain things, which is that everything comes from God in order to return to him. So this is also true. Like we are, we are God's creatures. We are from God. And our whole life are going back toward him. And that which is heaven is presence with God, right? And so our, the, the finality of this is to really, really be with him. And all of these things are kind of coming together in one, not just as a light to others, to the world, revelation to the Gentiles, this epiphany in the broad sense, but epiphany in also this really particular sense of coming and like being one in the same way that we have always desired it. It's something that is written into our hearts. It is something that we are always seeking with our lives and either slow or fast or well, or sometimes not so well, always right there in front of us. So a couple things about the Magi, things that I'm not gonna say at, at mass today. <clears throat> so who are the Magi? Right, well, there's of course the tradition of who they are. It's, uh, we, we can say like we have been in the, in the reflections we've been sending out every day of like, who are the Magi? Well, it's a little bit more complicated than that. Um, they traditionally are three three gifts, three magi, and they have names, um, Melchior, Gaspar, Balthazar. And maybe if you have statues of them in your house, one of them is black and he's Balthazar. And <laughs> like this, this, is, this isn't like real. This is, this is just how we depict them. This is how it's presented. And um, knowing the names doesn't matter that much, right? And and, and the finding them as three is merely because of the gifts, but so there are three, so there they are. Uh, but the Magi also have this history in reality. Um, by the way, if you should ever go to Cologne in Germany, that is where the relics of the three wise men are. That's kind of part of the claim to fame. And their, their feast day on the calendar of saints was just a little while ago. But so it's, it's not just some kind of like random, like wispy image of a person. No, there's, there's a history to them too. And part of this fun thing is that even as the Magi come to bless the Holy Family, and they do bless by bringing gifts, right? So in a very, very simple way, blessing is a sharing of grace, a sharing of gift, right? So like in its most basic sense, grace is a gift from God. Grace is favor from God. Well, the Magi come and offer gifts. So during this time, part of our remembrance of the Epiphany is a blessing of homes. So if you should happen to walk by the church, like today, anytime this week, next weekend, I have a, um, a bunch of stuff for you. There's holy water, which is epiphany water, blessed in a special way uh, for epiphany, and also chalk, which is epiphany chalk, blessed in a special way, and instructions on how to do it. Now, it's it's really something that should be done in a kind of a formal sense. The priest should come, it's a big blessing, whatever, but this is a special year anyway, and it's just easy to come and do it yourself, frankly, um, if only for the sake of remembering, especially with your family, what is going on with the epiphany. The arrival of the wise men, the Magi, call them what you will, three kings, 
um, is something which we celebrate in our homes too. If only because we are also recalling how the many ways in which Christ comes to us. <laughs> Both of these things together all the time. And it's really beautiful. So this is the one that at the end of it, you use that chalk and you write on the door somewhere, some funny letters. Like in this case, it'd be 20 plus and a little cross, C plus M plus B plus 21. Uh, the, so the 20 and the 21 is the year. The three letters in the middle are, may Christ bless this home. Also, by the way, frankly, the names of the three wise men, Melchior, Gaspar, Balthazar, you get the idea. And it's cute and quaint and interesting and fun, but it's also a way to kind of instantiate, to make real this remembrance that we're making of us going to Christ, Christ coming to us, Christ being manifested to the world. These things are worthwhile. And they're all, notice, very much kind of like above and beyond. Unlike the Nativity of Christ, which is very important because it sets the stage of how our salvation works, that is through our own humanity, do we receive the divinity of God? You know, like this is how that, this is really crucial. Or like the resurrection of the Lord, which is the promise of eternal life for us all and those kinds of things. The epiphany does not have that same kind of part of our salvation aspect in, in such a real and precise way. Rather, it's showing the broad picture, showing the broad picture. Christ comes to us, we go to Christ. It doesn't have the same kind of intensity as the image of the crucifix when we look at the nativity with you know, statues of wise men coming close. It doesn't have that same kind of intensity, but it doesn't have to. Because so much of our faith isn't just about like those big building blocks, but also the rest of it that gives it shape and form. And frankly, the beauty that we get to enjoy. This is a time that we are continuing to enjoy the celebration of Christmas, the 10th day of Christmas now. We are continuing to enjoy it. There's no reason not to. There's every reason to do it, so long as we maintain in our hearts that pure, innocent joy at the nativity of the Lord. This is a time that in that little advent that we have every year in the month of December, we enjoy that presence of Christ in much the same way as through that big advent of our lives, we wait to enjoy that presence really of God in heaven forever. Isn't that great? It's just pretty. <laughs> it's just pleasant and something that is a great gift to us from God. The epiphany that we are celebrating now is an image of the theophany that we will have when we are with him. And this is something which should give us a great deal of hope because we see how often and how frequently and how well our Lord comes to us because he loves us. As we always do, let's bring our prayers together now and offer them to the Lord that he will hear and answer us. For an end to the global coronavirus pandemic, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those suffering from the disease, either physically, financially, or emotionally, are healed and fully recovered. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That a spirit of unity come to the American people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Catholic faithful remain close to the Lord during these times. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And now for the prayers of our community. Linda asks for us to pray for the souls in purgatory. May God have great mercy on them and for her dad, for her dad may he be at peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heidi asks us to pray for her son, Cedric, who is recovering from a concussion. May God grant him a quick and full recovery. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gathering all our prayers into one, let us offer them in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who on this day revealed your only begotten Son to the nations by the guidance of a star, grant in your mercy that we who know you already by faith may be brought to behold the beauty of your sublime glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Great. Well, it stopped snowing for a little bit. It's just a lovely winter day. What can you say? Let's keep praying. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, the eyes of mercy toward us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. O God, our refuge and our strength, Look down in mercy on your people who cry to you. And by the intercession of the glorious and immaculate Virgin Mary, Mother of God, of Saint Joseph, her spouse, of your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, and of all the saints, in mercy and goodness, hear our prayers for the conversion of sinners and for the liberty and exaltation of our Holy Mother and Church. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Fantastic. Everyone have a beautiful Sunday and a lovely weekend. Come by the church sometime if you can and pick up some water and some chalk and instructions on how to use them. It's fun. It's enjoyable. Something to do with the family, you know? All right. Everyone, God bless, and we'll see you tomorrow. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.